Okay, so this is also a very interesting question. Slightly tricky, but we can solve it, right? Imagine we are given these three equations. The first one is m plus k power m is big O of n power m. Oh, by the way, here k and m are constants. Okay, that's important to state. Okay, I forgot to write that, right? Here k and m are constants. The second one is uh, 2 power n plus 1 is big O of 2n. The third one is 2 power 2n plus 1 is big O 2 of n. The question here is which of them are true? The question is which of them are true? Which of them, which of these three statements are true? Okay, so let's work out. Let's take the first one, right? The first one is n plus k power m is order of n power m, right? So if you write it down, so let's take the LHS here, right? Right. If you if you expand on this, okay, this is simple. Uh, probably what you learnt in your eleventh and twelfth grade, right? You can write this as n power m plus m c one n power n minus one k power one plus m c two n power m minus two k square, so on so forth up to k power m. Right. This is this is the binomial expansion. Okay, I think this is called the binomial expansion of this, right? So we all probably learned this when we learned about combinatorics or combinations and permutations and things like that. Very simple. Now, if you if you observe this carefully, okay, this is basically n power m, right? Here you have some constant. This is constant and this is also constant because your k and m are constants, right? So you can write this as some constant times n power m minus 1 plus some other constant because again, here this and this is constant, okay? n power m minus 2, so on, so forth. The in the final thing, everything is a constant, right? This is constant Cm, right? So what you have here basically is basically a polynomial term. So we saw in one of the previous examples that this is a polynomial, right? So you have a so you have n power m, n power m minus 1, n power m minus 2 up to n power 0. This is basically a polynomial which is multiplied by some constant terms. And we saw that if you have a polynomial like this, okay, this is a simple polynomial, right, with degree m. Okay, when you have this, this is nothing but order of n power m. This is also theta of n power m. Okay, this is also omega of n power m. But we don't care about theta and omega in this question. So this part suffices. So this is certainly true. Now let's take the second one, right? The second one is 2 power n plus 1 is theta of 2 power n. This is what is the, we have to determine whether this is true or not. Let's take this part, right? Let's, let's work this part. This is 2 into 2 power n, right? 2 into 2 power n is basically 2 power n plus 1. This is what it is here. On the other side, you have 2 power n here. So to prove this, to prove this, you need to say that this is less than equal to, this is less than equal to some constant times 2 power n. There should exist some constant and some constant n0 for all n greater than or equal to n0, this is from the formula, right? So if this is satisfied, then we can write this, right? Imagine if my c equals to 3, because I can take any constant c, right? If my c equals to 3, what happens here? 2 into 2 power n is less than or equal to 3 into 2 power n for all n greater than or equal to 1. Think about this. For all n greater than or equal to 1, this is satisfied. Because this 3 is greater than 2, right? This is same as this, right? Since these two are same, you can ignore them. They both are same, right? And I can pick any constant c. There exists some c and some constant n0. So 3 is greater than 2 and hence my problem is solved. So this is also true. So this is also true. This is the tricky one. This is where a lot of people make a mistake. Okay. So let's write this down also. Okay. So the third one is, 2 power 2n plus 1 is big O of 2 power n. Okay, this is where a lot of people make a mistake. If this is true, if this was true, what can I show? 2 power 2n plus 1 is less than or equal to some constant times 2 power n and there exists a constant c comma n0 for all n greater than or equal to n0. This is from the definition itself, right? So if I simplify this, this is nothing but 2 into 2 power 2n. See, basically I'm, I'm taking this exponent 1 outside. This is less than or equal to c into 2 power n. I need to show this. I need to show that this is true 
and there exists some c and n naught that this is true for all n greater than or equal to n naught okay so let's see okay suppose if i make my c equals to 2 okay so let's say i make my c equals to 2 so that i can cancel these two ones i can pick any c right as long as i can pick any c greater than 0 it's it's up to my wish so if i make c equals to 2 these two things will get cancelled out what am i left with i am left with 2 power 2n right less than equal to 2 power n is this true let's take log on both sides if i take log on both sides 2n less than n this is not true this is actually not true and not just and you can prove the same thing by picking any c even if you pick c equals to 3 or 4 you can prove the same logic here right so let's see if i pick c equals to 3 what happens i'll just show it to you to, to convince you i have 2 into 2n less than equal to 3 into 2n right now what happens okay let's take log on both sides so log of this is log 2 log 2 plus 2n less than equal to log 3 plus n because look at this log a into b right log a into b is log a plus log b is log a plus log b i've just used this okay so here even here even here this is not always true look at this look at this my log 2 is less than log 3 and this has to be true for all n greater than or equal to some n0 but i have 2n here and i have n here this log 2 i agree is smaller than log 3 but as n increases these two are still constants these two don't grow these two are constants okay as n increases 2n 2n will dominate right let's assume n greater than 10 n greater than or equal to 10 then these two become negligible and i have 20 here and i have only 10 here right so 2n will not be less than or equal to 10 so even though there is some difference between log 2 and log 3 the gap between n and 2n the gap between n and 2n right is going to over dominate the gap between log 2 and log 3 so whichever value of c you take you will run into a situation where you will run into something equivalent to this so this is not true right so in these three this is the tricky part where you have to be careful so this is not true okay so we have also solved this so which of them are true only one and two are true three is not true and lot of people here the mistake they make is the mistake they make is they write this okay and they say i'll take log on both sides 2n is order of n and hence the problem is solved so what people do here is they cancel these two out they take log on both sides and they say 2n is order of n so this must be true no that's not how you compute it you go from the formula what is the formula here say this has to be satisfied you can't again put order of n into this you have to work out the actual mathematics here you can't do approximations like this you can't use big o notation here to prove this big o notation you are using some other big o notation right you have to be careful when you use it okay in this situation this is what you have to prove and if you take log on both sides this is what you have to prove which is never true and this has to be true for all n greater than or equal to n0 and this will never be true this is true for n equals to 0 but not for every n greater than or equal to some constant n0 right so this is where a lot of students mess up this problem especially that's why this is a tricky but a very interesting one